हेलो माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स एंड वेलकम बैक टू एक्सेलेंस बैच एंड आई एम योर दीक्षा मैम सो हियर वी हैव स्टार्टेड द चैप्टर ह्यूमन हेल्थ एंड डिजीजेस एंड सो फार वी हैव डिस्कस्ड डिजीजेस इम्यूनिटी एंड वन ड्रेडली डिजीज दैट वाज एड्स एंड नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द सेकंड ड्रेडली डिजीज इन द वर्ल्ड एंड दैट इज कैंसर सो यस लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड विद द नेक्स्ट डिजीज व्हिच इज कैंसर so what is a cancer and why cancer is known as a cancer at, at the first place so many of you uh, doesn't even know why cancer got its name cancer cancer word came from crab so when the early scientists the greek scientists they saw the cancer for the first time they uh, look at that particular area where the person got cancer and it looked like the uh, legs of a crab right so from there they got the name or it got its name cancer from the crab right otherwise it has nothing to do with the crab just because it appears like a crab so what cancer is to understand cancer deeply first let's talk about something known as tumor all right first let's talk about tumor what's a tumor tumor is uncontrolled division of cell uncontrolled division of cell that means your own body cells they have gone mad and they started multiplying like anything right like this so it's one cell of your body it is now multiplying very badly fastly it was not supposed to multiply but now it is multiplying fastly you call it as tumor and we also have another name for it that is neoplasm so this collection of cells in your body is also known as tumor or neoplasm now this tumor now this tumor is of two kinds tumor is of two kinds one is a benign tumor and second is a malignant tumor so one tumor is a benign tumor and second is a malignant tumor so benign tumor is a tumor that remains localized at one particular organ only for example if it's the uncontrolled division of cells in the liver it will remain in the liver only it will not go to other organs like it will not move through blood it will not go to brain it will not go to breast it will not go to lungs it will remain localized at one particular area or organ only so that is your benign tumor it is localized it is localized and remain in one particular organ because it remains in one organ only you can easily remove it surgically so it is less harmful i'm not saying it is normal as comparison to the malignant it is less harmful on the other side if we talk about malignant malignant is the most harmful one why because this is the one which moves to various body organs like if i say the cells of breast they started undergoing uncontrolled cell division right if that cell division or that neoplasm or tumor remains in the breast only then it would be benign but after some time if it is more deadly it start moving through blood and move to the other body organs like liver lung and so then this will be a malignant tumor so always it start with the benign and it moves to the uh, malignant but it's not that it will always move towards the malignant but malignant has a story in the starting it is usually benign okay so this is the most harmful the cells moves to which cells cancer cell the cancer cells moves to other organ now i have used the word cancer so that means the word particularly cancer is used for malignant tumor so malignant tumor is known as a cancer the benign you usually call it just as a tumor okay so this one moves to the other organ this property of movement this property of movement of cell is known as metastasis metastasis so metastasis is a property it's a feature of which cells cancer cells in which tumor 
malignant tumor not in the benign tumor so it's a very important property of the cancer cell and that makes them more deadly that makes them more dangerous if imagine this would not be a property of the cell the cancer would have never taken place only the tumor would have taken place in the body which can easily be removed by the surgery or so but this property make it more dangerous right so basically what this cancer is it is the uncontrolled division of cell and the cells are your own body cell they are not coming from outside your own body cells are getting transformed that means they are getting changed and they are now showing uncontrolled division of cell okay to understand it more deeply let's let's talk about what's the difference between a normal cell a normal body cell and a cancer cell because only then you will be able to understand what cancer cells they are so let's talk about their various properties let's talk about the various properties okay all right so first of all it's in the shape the first thing that you can recognize uh, which cell is a cancer cell and which cell is a normal cell is based on their shape whenever you'll see normal cells of your body usually they are flat cells they are flat cells and these cells they are completely rounder in shape they're completely rounder in shape let me just draw this so this they will be like flat cell like this and they will be completely rounder so your normal cell is getting transformed and it is becoming a deadly cell known as a cancer cell so it's like your own body cells only okay how does transformation take place that we'll talk about that in later sections all right so first difference is these cells will be little flat like this probably like oval cell but they will be perfectly rounder cells okay second thing is that your normal cells they are differentiated cell they are mature cells for example when you were embryo your all cells were like stem cells they had the property to get converted into any type of cell so a process occur in them that is known as differentiation okay in earlier stage uh, all cells are like stem cells that means they can be converted into any type of a cell and these cells are mature cell let me give you an example like liver cell hepatocyte okay and the process by which they got mature that is known as differentiation that is known as differentiation okay so this stem cell they have a property they can undergo division they can undergo mitosis but mature cell they cannot undergo mitosis like that you know they cannot undergo rapid mitosis like that rather they are they have been matured for a reason so that they can perform their own function what is the function function of a liver cell is to produce enzymes so that it can do its function like liver what does liver do detoxification of drugs and for that it needs some enzyme for detoxification so liver cell is usually have been matured or have been differentiated for a reason that it will perform a particular function perform a function whereas stem cell cannot produce any uh, stem cell cannot perform any function it can only undergo division but you can change it into the mature cell so in the early stages you know we have mesoderm ectoderm and endoderm all these are cells are like stem cell and they can be converted into any kind of a cell maybe a cell of lung maybe a cell of liver maybe a cell of bone by the process known as differentiation somehow if the reverse takes place in your body imagine i say the reverse known as de differentiation takes place then the cell can again undergo division what is the reverse this this is known as de differentiation so in cancer cell the reverse 
thing happen right what happens in the reverse thing the differentiated cell go back to its stem cell stage and this process is known as dedifferentiation that's why they undergo rapid mitosis or they multiply faster why because these cells they are dedifferentiated cells they have moved back to their original state where now they act as a stem cell and they keep on multiplying right otherwise you must have, must be thinking ma'am if they they are our own body cell it will be better for us we are getting more in number why they are not of any use because now the your own body cell is getting converted into stem cell but it cannot perform the specific function it was performing because it has been converted into a cell like a stem cell okay that's why they are of no use rather more harmful how we'll talk about that one by one okay now another property that these cells they do not have but normal cells have is the property of contact inhibition property of contact inhibition whereas these cancer cell they lack the property which property the property of contact inhibition what is this property of contact inhibition let me explain you in more detail so imagine you have a very fixed particular place in your body like this okay and in this place you have just one cell like epithelial cell now this epithelial cell have enough space now it can divide okay imagine the cells start dividing so they are dividing because they have all the nutrition and they also have space they also have space now you can see because the cells are dividing the overcrowding is taking place and due to overcrowding the cells are touching each other they are coming in contact with each other so when there is overcrowding of cells and cells are dividing and when the, there is overcrowding they start coming in contact with each other they start touching each other now during that touch they are basically inhibiting each other and that is a property of contact inhibition and what are they inhibiting for inhibiting for not doing the mitosis that means the cells are telling themselves to each other that now it has been so much overcrowding we do not have a sufficient space we do not have a sufficient nutrition let's stop dividing and that is a property of contact inhibition just like if there is a seat for three people on a desk and three people are sitting there on the desk if the fourth one will come you will start touching each other from here and you start feeling it's overcrowding the fifth person cannot be adjusted here and you will stop that person from sitting in your desk right that's a property of contact inhibition that is present in your normal cell so normal cells have a property of contact inhibition what's in the case of this uh, cancer cell cancer cell do not have this property imagine you are sitting in the same desk which is a three seater now you are you are you are not concerned with if anyone is touching you or not now you are asking the 10 people to come sit on the lap sit on the head sit on the front table do whatsoever that's how cancer cell behave they have nothing to do with the overcrowding they don't care if they are touching each other the only thing they know is that they will keep on dividing right so that's a property of contact inhibition in words if i say it is a property property where cells inhibit each other when they are in contact due to overcrowding due to overcrowding and that's not the property of cancer cell they lack this property okay another point of difference between a normal cell and a cancer cell is that let me write it here again normal cell and a cancer cell is that the cancer cell have high telomerase activity high telomerase activity or normal cell have no or less telomerase activity now what is this telomerase let me explain you so if you remember the structure of chromosome
द क्रोमोजोम हैव दीज एंड्स नोन एज टीलोमियर एंड्स इन एवरी क्रोमोजोम वी हैव दीज एंड्स नोन एज टीलोमियर वाई द टीलोमियर्स आर गिवेन टीलोमियर्स आर प्रोटेक्टिव एंड्स फॉर दिस इंटायर मेन डी एन ए ऑफ अ क्रोमोजोम टीलोमियर आर द प्रोटेक्टिव एंड्स फॉर दिस इंटायर मेन डी एन ए फॉर प्रिवेंटिंग द मेन डी एन ए टू गेट डाइजेस्टेड बाय एक्जो न्यूक्लियस एक्टिविटी वट इज एक्जो न्यूक्लियस इंजाइम एक्जो न्यूक्लियस इंजाइम इज एन इंजाइम विच कैन डाइजेस्ट द एंड ऑफ डी एन ए सो इफ यू हैव टीलोमियर हेयर द एंड ऑफ द टीलोमियर विल बी डाइजेस्टेड बट द मेन क्रोमोजोम एंड विल नॉट बी डाइजेस्टेड सो टीलोमियर इज लाइक अ प्रोटेक्टिव एंड फॉर योर क्रोमोजोम एंड इट हेल्प्स your dna to get digested by the exonucleus activity now what happen every time your cell divide every time your cell divide the telomere end gets reduced in size okay let me draw it parallel to this every time your cell divide the telomere size it reduces it reduces now you must be thinking ma'am just like every dna is dividing and the dna replicate so it's also a kind of dna why can't it replicate d uh, this telomere do have a dna polymerase like enzyme which is telomere telomerase enzyme the telomerase enzyme is inhibited is inhibited in normal cell that's why the entire this dna is dividing but the telomere is not dividing this is also made up of dna this is also made up of dna but the only function of telomere is to prevent the exonucleus activity on this one and to protect it this one is not dividing on every division because this dna is multiplied by their dna polymerase so it's dividing but its dna polymerase is telomerase and this telomerase has been inhibited okay so why telomerase is not uh, why telomere ends are not dividing on every division because the telomerase enzyme which divides it is inhibited okay this is what happen in a normal cell so there will be a time that will occur when the telomere ends the telomere ends will be completely destroyed and now the main dna the telomere ends will be completely destroyed and the main dna will be digested by exonuclease exonuclease enzyme will digest the main dna and which will lead to cell death also known as apoptosis so this is how we say that every cell normal cells of your body do a phenomenon that is cell death where it will die after some interval that's why we die that's why we are mortal we say every cell of your body they are mortal cells the normal cells they are mortal cells that means they will die why they will die because on division their telomere end will reduce and a time will come when the telomere ends will completely be destroyed uh, and exonucleus will digest the main dna and hence your cell will die but this is occurring because of one thing that telomerase is inhibited in this imagine if the telomerase enzyme is not inhibited and it is working if the telomerase is not inhibiting inhibited and it is working so in every division your telomere ends will be retained they will not be destroyed they will not lose their uh, you know shape and their size so in every division of telomere is maintained then what will happen then your cell will never die the cell will be immortal so that occurs in the case of the cancer cell in cancer cell the telomerase activity is high as a result telomere divides with the main dna in every division hence the cancer cells they are immortal cells they will not die they escape the path of apoptosis they lack apoptosis what is apoptosis the cell death so these are some of a property by which cancer cell is able to win win in your body all right moving further now there is a role of genes also there is a role of genes also we said that yes this is how normal cell is 
and we are also saying this is how the cancer cell is so we are discussing this is what normal cell have this is what cancer cell have but what made it a cancer cell or how it is becoming a cancer cell and the process by which they are becoming a cancer cell or the change they are getting is transformation the change they are getting is transformation but again how does this change occur how does the transformation occur for that we have certain genes responsible we have certain genes responsible so there are two genes which are responsible for converting the normal cell into cancer cell or transformation of a normal cell into, into the uh, cancer cell first gene are the tumor suppressor gene tumor suppressor gene and second genes are the oncogenes so these are the genes responsible for converting a normal cell into cancer cell how let's see when nature was making you maybe nature knew that somehow this kind of a defect will occur in the body which will lead to the transformation of normal cell into the cancer cell nature is powerful nature is smart they knew it so nature gave you an inbuilt mechanism to protect your body from becoming or from converting a normal cell into the cancer cell so not everyone is getting cancer right yes until or unless you are doing something bad by which you are inducing it okay so nature gave you certain genes which will prevent the transformation of normal cell to the cancer cell or rather i will say these are the genes which will suppress the formation of tumor cells in your body so that's why they got the name tumor suppressor genes so they suppress the formation of tumor cell so what's the property of a tumor cell you all know tumor cell have a property of uncontrolled cell division this is the main thing otherwise cell this cell doesn't have anything all the properties the cancer cell have is uh, the property has been changed just for one function that is uncontrolled cell division right so the tumor suppressor genes are the genes which will suppress the formation of tumor cell by inhibiting cell cycle by inhibiting cell cycle so you must have uh, studied the cell cycle in botany and you must have studied that in the cell cycle there are certain proteins which stop the cell cycle and that's how the mature cells do not have their cell cycle resumed right g not phase and for, for that thanks to certain proteins right so there are certain genes which are producing protein that will stop the cell cycle stop the cell division okay let me give you an example of the genes p53 and brca1 brca2 these genes are producing a proteins which will inhibit the cell cycle and hence cell will never undergo uncontrolled cell divisions what if these genes they got mutated then the cell will become a cancer cell imagine these genes were inhibiting the cell cycle hence no tumor cell imagine these genes they are shut off by mutation then there will be no protein that will inhibit the cell cycle and hence the cell the cell will become a cancer cell so in cancer these genes are mutated so mutation in tumor suppressor gene forms cancer cell do not forget this mutation in the mutation in the tumor suppressor genes causes or forms or transform normal cell into cancer cell second we have other oncogenes so in our body there are some normal genes present in our body there are some normal genes present known as proto oncogenes these are normal genes of your body right imagine these are the genes which are producing protein to start the cell cycle to resume the cell cycle these were the gene that were producing the protein to stop the cell cycle and these are the genes that are there to start the cell cycle but these genes are normally shut off these are shut off by the proteins of these genes so that the cell cycle should not work 
imagine in a person who is having cancer these genes are also mutated and these genes also get mutated and they are behaving in a manner that no one can stop them and they are behaving in a manner that no one can stop them so proto oncogenes after transformation or sometimes after mutation they gets converted into oncogenes which are known as cancer causing genes which are known as cancer causing genes right like one example of a proto oncogene the genes which start the cell cycle or gene that produce the protein that start the cell cycle so if i say earlier it was stopped but now this gene got mad it cannot be stopped by anything it has been mutated because it has been mutated now it will keep on producing a protein and cell cycle will always be resumed it will never get stopped on the other hand the cell also cell also do not have these genes it is also mutated then no one is there to stop and cell will keep on doing uncontrolled cell division so when a person is having cancer it's not a one day phenomenon as you can see a lot of things are happening it needs to stop this and that and so so having cancer is not one day phenomenon when you are exposed to certain things for a longer duration of time in your lifetime then you get cancer cancer doesn't occur in just one year or so no it's a process of many years and usually you will see people who are old they get the cancer right mostly in a majority because old people have very worn out old cells and these old cells which are worn out cells they are Uh, more susceptible to errors as comparison to the new cells okay so this is how these factors they cause cancer so proto oncogenes are normal genes of your body when they got mutated they become cancer causing genes and second the suppression or the mutation in the tumor suppressor gene can also cause cancer all right okay so that's about gene let's talk about cancer causing agents the cancer causing agents now what are the things that causes mutation what are the things that are causing transformation as i've told you something is inducing cancer right i said ki uh, that uh, it is an induced thing it's not it can happen to anyone like that you are exposed to certain things that you then only you have cancer now what are these things these are cancer causing agents known as carcinogens carcinogens are of two type one is the physical agents they are of sorry three types second is the chemical agents and third is biological so any agent any agent which can cause cancer is carcinogen and these agents have a property that either they can cause mutation or they can cause transformation of cell transformation means conversion somehow they are converting your normal cell into the cancer cell that's transformation mutation particularly when you are talking mutation we are talking about the genes have been altered the genes have been altered so these carcinogen they perform two functions in your body one they will do mutation which will lead to transformation or a change of your normal cell into cancer cell now these three uh, these carcinogens have been divided based on their property into three categories chemical biological and physical by which i mean that even physical factors can cause cancer even chemicals and even biological things can cause cancer right what are these physical things in physical things we have heat we have yes heat constant touch or irritation radiations what radiations ionizing radiations like x rays uv rays gamma rays all these can cause cancer why they can cause mutation ma'am heat yes excessive heat so uh, somehow uh, if you are constantly in touch with excessive heat that can cause cancer so you must have heard of people in the colder regions they use uh, a particular pot which is uh, containing a 
the coal burning coal and they used to put it under their uh, you know clothes so that they can feel heat around so that is quite dangerous why because that heat uh, when it is constant and for longer duration of time that can transform the cells of your stomach and that can lead to stomach pancreas or intestinal cancer and the cases have been seen where people who are using these earthen pots with coal for giving heat to the body and they're putting inside the clothes that has actually lead to cancer in those areas right so these are the physical agents what about the chemicals there are different kind of chemicals like di methyl nitrosamine benzopyrene these are usually present in cigarette smoke and they cause lung cancer they cause lung cancer next we have is aflatoxin aflatoxin is present in the or it is secreted by some fungus and that causes liver cancer right now ma'am fungus why there are certain packaged food and when these foods when they pass their expiry dates or when they are very old they get stale and fungus starts to grow on them so on on when the fungus starts to grow on them the fungus starts secreting aflatoxin and if you consume that uh, food aflatoxin goes through your body and it transform your normal uh, liver cell into cancer cell and hence it cause liver cancer okay then we have asbestos asbestosis is also a kind of uh, occupational lung disorder if you are exposed for longer duration to that asbestos it can cause lung cancer right next we have cadmium oxide cadmium oxide it leads to prostate cancer the cancer of prostate gland most common cancer nowadays and it's it happens to male because male have prostate gland then des diethyl stilbestrol it's the analog of hormone estrogen and it causes uterine and breast cancer this has been used so far in injections to the cows so that if the cow got the steroid because it is similar to estrogen it the cow will produce more milk but somehow this is a steroid it can pass through cells enter the milk it gets into our system and that's why female nowadays have a lot of menstrual problems and breast cancers why because this has been used as an injection for so long in the cows so that the cows can produce more milk and this has also been used so much in the fertilizers nowadays and that's why the cases of cancers are rising okay so prostate cancer breast cancer lung cancer these are some of the you know most commonly caused cancer nowadays then we have in biological we have certain viruses what viruses like hepatitis b virus now you must be thinking ma'am hepatitis b virus causes hepatitis but it also causes liver cancer hepatitis is a kind of a liver cancer in this case okay next we have herpes simplex virus this is also a virus that can transform a normal cell into a cancer cell then we have hiv that causes sarcoma i will let you know what is sarcoma then we have htlv if you remember in hiv i have told you hiv opportunistic diseases or symptom is one such cancer also htlv is human t cell lymphotrophic virus lymphotrophic virus this is the virus which is the most common cause of t cell leukemia and i think most of you must be knowing what is leukemia blood cancer one of a dreadliest right so these viruses they can also transform the normal cells into the cancer cell fine and here the chemicals they can also do the such thing as such the physical so all these agents they are cancer causing agents known as carcinogens what are they they are carcinogens and they can transform normal cell into cancer cell so particularly when you are exposed to a lot of uv radiation like in people who are albino or uh, 
who are like americans and so which are white people they are exposed if they are exposed to the sunlight more they got you know uh, a lot of allergies on the skin and sometimes they also get uh, the skin cancer why because they don't have a lot of melanin the skin pigment and melanin protects you melanin protects you from the uv radiation so thankfully we are little <laughs> here relieved <laughs> so now let's see how cancer cell kills your normal cell we are saying it's a dreadly disease but how is it a dreadly disease let's see so what happened imagine this is your skin this is your skin and this is the epithelial cells and we are talking about the cells of epithelial tissue okay imagine these are your epithelial cells the cells of skin and we are talking about the skin cancer below the skin you have this dermis layer which is made up of connective tissue and it contains a lot of fibers proteins and so right so these are your which cells epithelial cell and we are talking about the cancer of epithelial cell the skin cancer okay now imagine these cells some of the cell get transformed and start undergoing rapid cell division and becomes a tumor but it is localized so it's a benign tumor but let's see how it gets converted into malignant now these cells which are tumor cells what are these tumor cells these cells they will start secreting some enzyme they will start secreting some enzymes so these are enzyme to digest protein now why do they need enzyme to digest protein because if the proteins will be digested then the cells can easily erode the surface and move downward now because they are secreting protein now these cells can easily migrate and move to these spaces or the second layer of the skin and here they will secrete some other new thing and that is tumor angiogenic factor which is a growth factor tumor angiogenic factor what is this tumor angiogenic factor this is a factor it's a growth factor that will lead to the formation of new blood vessel and the process of formation of new blood vessel is angiogenesis angiogenesis what is angiogenesis formation of new blood vessels formation of new blood vessel okay how it will produce new blood vessel and usually in a in our body the new blood vessels are only formed when you are in the embryo when the blood vessels are need to be formed okay so imagine a large blood vessel is already going on from here and it is supplying blood it is supplying blood to your normal cells it is supplying blood to your normal cells like this what are these cells normal cell now normal cells are getting the full nutrition imagine the tumor has not taken place the uh, the normal cells they are present here and they are getting the full blood supply but now the cells these cells have been converted into tumor cell and these cells also start moving downwards with the property known as metastasis and they start secreting this factor known as tumor angiogenic factor and due to these factor a small blood vessels will be formed that are basically connected to this blood vessel and now what will happen the entire blood will be taken by the cancer cell now you must be thinking ma'am they are very small little cells few cell what if they will get blood the other cells are getting it's fine no they are like you know uh, it just like uh, what you say just like a what you say in hindi we say rakshas right right like a monster it's like a monster they eat so much they these tumor cell they are highly active cell they have high metabolism so they multiply so faster they need a lot of food so all the blood will be all the blood and nutrition from the blood will go to the cancer cell and these normal cell they will starve and die right so for example uh, your mother cooked five chapatis or five rotis in your house and uh, there are five people in the house and you will have one one chapati and everything is good imagine 10 guests came into your house 
and you don't have any other food to cook you just have that five chapati so now what you will do you will give those five chapatis to your guest and you have nothing left to eat right and imagine you will never get anything to eat then you will also starve and die right just like that normal cells are not getting the entire nourishment from the uh, blood rather the tumor cell are very smart they will make small trajectories of blood vessels they take all the blood towards them and these cells they will not get any nutrition and they will die of starvation this is how these cells they are very dangerous though we think something extra is coming now new cells are formed then what no because these new cell they will take nutrition and the cells which need to perform the functions they will die and these are doing nothing just dividing they are not producing anything okay if liver cell is transported uh, transformed into cancer cell in a way it's not doing anything it's just dividing it's not producing any enzymes of a liver that it is supposed to right but uh, in spite of that whatever normal cells are left behind they will die of starvation okay so this is how it kills your normal cells let's talk about what are the various kind of cancer first is carcinoma first i'll write all the name okay second is sarcoma third is leukemia fourth lipoma fifth adenoma sixth myoma okay so carcinoma carcinoma is a cancer of skin sarcoma is a cancer of mesodermal tissue mesodermal tissue right it can be the breast cancer it can be a bone cancer right bone cancer is also have a name of osteoma so when i'm saying carcinoma it's basically a cancer of the mesodermal tissue it can be muscle it can be osteoma it can be lipoma these names are given on the basis of a particular target cell for example in leukemia the wbcs the blood cell they are the target t cells right in lipoma adipose tissue your fat cells adenoma the glands if there is a cancer of pituitary hypothalamus or you can say which is very rare but like a thyroid gland cancer like a pancreatic cancer it will be the adenoma myoma the muscle cancer osteoma the bone cancer okay so these are the various types of cancer and by the name this is how we call them all right so let's talk about the detection technique how do you get to know a person is having cancer first of all the person will feel some nodule or outgrowth on the body and person will start feeling pain so the person or the who is having the pain will go to the doctor and doctor just can't just look at it and say it's cancer the doctor will ask you to go for certain test now what are these test first test is i'm not talking about the sequential i'm just talking about the types of test okay so take it that way first kind of a test is biopsy second test is herceptins third are the diagnostic test like x ray fourth is your ct scan and fifth is your mri let's take and talk about them one by one in the biopsy what you do for example if someone is having a nodule here so the doctor will put a syringe take the tissue out and check what type of cells these are so it's a kind of a histopath histo means tissue path is related to disease so here we do histopathological studies we take out we take out the sample of a tissue we take out cells and examine and we examine because you know these cells if they are perfectly rounder showing under un uncontrolled division they do not have a property of contact inhibition and we'll also see their genes and chromosome then we'll confirm it yes these are cancer cell right but this is a last thing to do why because by that you are invading a needle in the cancer cell you can disrupt it and deliberately or somehow non deliberately also what we are doing we are disrupting it and by that they can move to the other tissues so we are making it malignant so that's why it is the last resort to do herceptins what are these antibodies what have we done we 
already have extracted various kind of cancer cell. Imagine this is a cell of a breast cancer. And we know in the entire world, a breast cancer cell have a particular protein on its surface. If the breast cancer occurs to any female on, in this planet Earth, that breast cancer cell will definitely be having this protein on its surface. So, opposite to that or against this protein, we have made certain antibodies. And the antibodies will confirm whether the cell is a breast cancer cell or a normal cell. Imagine if this cell, we don't know it's a cancer cell or not. If it has this protein, the antibody will bind, which is the antibody is Herceptin. If this antibody binds, that means it's a cancer cell. If this antibody doesn't bind, that means this cell does not have a specific cancer protein and the person does not have cancer. So these are the antibodies formed against cancer cells. and confirm the cancer okay next we have x-rays and ct scan in x-rays just like we do when you have bone broken the x-ray machine is there and you take a 2d image of the cancer so this is usually done to see where the cancer is to have the exact location of it but the image formed will be with the help of ionizing radiation known as x-rays and image will be 2d image okay in ct scan ct means computed tomography you definitely are using ionizing radiation which are x-rays but you will get 3d image of internal organs so whatever internal organs we are looking at for example the person is at a suspect of a pancreatic cancer so by ct scan you will see that the person's entire organs 3d image can be seen and the race to make the image will be x-rays so in ct scan you must have seen in movies there is a white machine there is a hole and the machine go and the person lies on the bed and that bed goes inside the machine and the image is formed this is how CT scan looks like. Just like that of that machine, we have another machine which is MRI. If you'll see CT scan and MRI, they both appear the same. A bed and bed goes inside a machine, you know, just like that. But the functioning is different. The fundamentals are different. In CT scan, the machine is just like that, but X-rays are used. In MRI, which is known as magnetic resonance imaging. Yes, you are getting 3D image. Yes, you are seeing how the internal organs are, uh, you know, working. Yes, you will get that just like that of uh, the CT scan. But the difference is here you are using non-ionizing radiation. You are using non-ionizing radiation and magnetic field. And magnetic field to form the image. Right? So, MRI is considered as safest. Why? Because X-rays are themselves the physical agents to cause cancer. So, they are quite harmful. Right? But this one does not use X-ray. It uses non-ionizing radiation and magnetic field to produce the image. So, this is considered as a safest technique to detect cancer. So, usually when if a person is, uh, you know, uh, you know, susceptible for uh, or having a, the doctor thinks that a person is having a cancer, they're usually asked to go for these tests. These are the last resorts. Okay. All right. Okay. So someone is having cancer. You can see this image. This is an image of MRI of a breast cancer. And you can see this is how the tumor it looks like in MRI. This one. Okay. These cells are the tumor cells. Okay. So now you are going to be a doctor. Let's treat the patients. How can you treat them? The first resort is you can go for surgery if it is benign. Now you can also go for radiotherapy. What we do in radiotherapy? In radiotherapy, we use the strong radiations like gamma rays and so to kill the tumor cell. We destroy them. We burn them. This method is usually also used along with the surgical method. Imagine we remove this kind of a complete tumor from the body. But imagine the surrounding cell may also have been transformed, but you can't see them right now. So what uh, doctors usually do? 
they will pick up this by surgical method and they will burn the outside normal cell with the radiation that's the radiotherapy so either radiotherapy can be done done along with the surgery it can be done along uh, al uh, alone also right so what do we do in the radiotherapy the tumor cells are destroyed with high energy radiation with high energy radiations or we can also go for chemotherapy so chemo means chemicals so in chemotherapy the drugs are given right drugs are given so here anti cancerous drugs are given but these drugs like we have an example of when cristin when blastin these drugs they have a lot of side effects as well so you must have seen people who are undergoing chemotherapy they have cancer especially you must have seen in some celebrities also their hair loss takes place and along with that they also suffer from anemia because these drug they target the highly active cells of your body and these hair cells and the blood cells they are the highly active cell because they are formed after some days and uh, they are also get targeted and they also get destroyed so this is how you can treat people right you can treat people with these and some also there are other treatment methods like immunotherapy where immune system is basically targeted you are enhancing the immune system like by giving alpha and alpha interferons so alpha interferons are biological response modifiers biological response modifiers what does it mean it means there are certain glycoproteins that will enhance your immune system to function more if these are in high quantity <clears throat> your immune system will get triggered and it will start working efficiently so these artificially can also be given right uh, so these are certain treatment method now let's talk about some questions let's solve them the technique that uses strong magnetic field and non ionizing radiation to accurately detect pathological and physiological changing in the living tissue is so one of the thing is magnetic field is used simple the answer is mri so in mri we use non ionizing radiation and the magnetic field so that we can see the 3d image and we can know where ex at the uh, exact location the cancer is next question which is a pyq which of the following statement is not true for cancer cell in relation to mutation mutation in proto oncogene accelerate the cell cycle very true if proto oncogenes are mutated imagine this is proto oncogene if this is mutated what will it become it will become oncogene and this gene will accelerate the cell cycle so this is true we have to find which is not true which is not right mutation destroy telomerase inhibitor this is also true we say cancer cell have high activity of telomerase enzyme and in normal cell telomerase enzyme is inhibited so if it is inhibited definitely there will be an inhibitor also right so if there is a mutation in the inhibitor inhibition will be destroyed and telomerase are free this is what it is trying to say and this is true for example this is a telomere this is a telomere telomere have the enzyme telomerase in a normal cell this telomerase enzyme is inhibited by an inhibitor this is what inhibitor is if this inhibitor is destroyed by mutation so telomerase will be free this is what happen in a cancer cell mutations inactivate the cell control cell control is a type of a, a point or a checkpoints or a control system in the cell cycle which will inhibit the cell division so cell control if it is mutated then it will also lead to the formation of cancer cell mutation inhibit production of telomerase no by mutation the telomerase will work more so this is incorrect so answer to this question is 4 you have to find the incorrect one next okay that's the same i guess next question 
how many of the following cellular changes are associated with the progression from normal to malignant so it is saying when a cell is becoming normal to malignant cell what are the changes that will occur increase contact inhibition so basically it is asking the features of cancer cell so in a cancer cell you have decreased con decreased contact inhibition right so it should be decreased so this is the one which does not take place so this is wrong it will starve surrounding cell as i've told you this is how cancer cell kills normal cell they will starve the surrounding cell they will eat all their food so this is true angiogenesis formation of new blood vessels true they will form new blood vessel when you will become a doctor na if you will get an opportunity to see the tumor you will see there will be a cluster of cells a cl or a tissue will be there and around that a small small blood vessels will be present or you can google that as well okay so yes angiogenesis take place metastasis yes malignant is a proper uh, malignant is are the is a type of a cancer where cancer cell have a property to migrate so that's metastasis yes they have increased mitotic rate rapid divisions take place so b c and d three statement 1 2 3 four statement are correct so answer is 3 right next so next question read the following statement most cancers are treated by combination of surgery radiotherapy and chemotherapy Molecular biology techniques are being applied to detect genes in individual with inherited susceptibility to certain cancer. Alpha interferon activate immune system in tumor patient and help in destroying the tumor. Chemotherapy has side effects like hair loss and anemia. In leukemia there is a huge increase in the number of leukocyte. Okay. So you have to tell how many statements are correct. So this is not visible but here it is 4. Okay. So it is saying, yes, mostly cancer are not treated with, with one therapy only. We use combination of therapies. Either it can be surgery and radiotherapy if it is benign. If it is malignant, uh, usually they are advised for radio and chemotherapy. Molecular biology technique are applied to detect genes. So this sentence says that by using the molecular biology, we are searching the genes which are basically basically gets inherited that means they can pass from generation to generation and they are the cause of cancer so if uh, it was uh, with some research it has been known that or uh, be, uh, they, the scientists discover that there are certain genes of breast cancer which actually get inherited from one person to the uh, from the you know mother to the daughters and so right so this is true Yes, these interferons, they enhance the immune system and they are usually given to patients so that tumor cells can be killed. Chemotherapy do have the side effects like that. And in leukemia, there is a huge increase in the number of leukocytes. What are leukocytes? WBCs. So all the statements are correct. So answer is 1. Okay, next. Cancer cells differ from normal cells as they do not. That means cancer cell, they're different from normal cell as they do not. That means cancer cell is not doing that thing which normal cells have. So we have to find the property of a normal cell. Show increased telomerase activity, show metastasis, show contact inhibition, divide uncontrollably. So this is a property of a normal cell. So answer will be three. If somehow you got confused in such kind of question, do one thing which is the odd one out. Mark it that right so these are the property of cancer cell but this is for a normal cell mark the answer <laughs> okay so that's it about cancer i hope you have studied it really well with me <laughs> and you will revise it from the ncrt also i'll meet in the next class and uh, we'll discuss about the alcohol and drug abuse till then what is your homework you have to read the ncrt and solve more questions from the module if you have one right so i'll see you in the next class bye bye take care